continue the conversation with Orange County Supervisor John Warlock about the need for pension reform. And John, you don't win popularity points with a lot of folks by taking these positions. Uh, certainly the employees, if they don't understand what I'm really trying to do, are, are a little upset. Uh, but I am trying to protect their, their benefits. They don't realize that, but that's the goal. Uh, but the taxpayers are starting to get what's happening here. I, I had lunch with a former partner uh, yesterday, and he flew into uh, Florida for his mother-in-law's 80th birthday. And it, he noticed that there was another Californian that needed some help. And so this Floridian says, where are you from? He says, California. And that Floridian says, well, you Californians had better fix your problems. Don't expect us in Florida to fix your budget problems and pay for your pensions. So, I mean, so the, na the nation understands what's happening here. And we've done many shows on the dysfunctional state legislature. And the irony is that everyone seems to love their legislator, but as an institution, they're down to 20%. And they're really screwing up up there. I mean, the idea of balancing the state budget by at the last minute coming and grabbing money from the counties, grabbing money from the cities, grabbing it, it's just outrageous. And I know there's a, a valid measure to prevent that. Hopefully that will pass. But speak to the future. I know some of the things you've already mentioned are some of the ways out, but, but how, how did the taxpayers just have to rise up and say enough and we're, we're, we've, we've had it? I we're think mad sorry, we're not going to take it anymore. And I think this is the year, Art. Uh, in yeah. November, you're going to see ballot measures that we need to vote on. Some are moving deck furniture, but some are pretty critical. One is paycheck protection. If you can defund the public employee unions, you might have a chance. Uh, the other is pension reform with the California Foundation for Fiscal Responsibility. That levels the playing field and, and puts a cap on these pensions. So this is the year. If we're really going to fix it, then, then the voters have to go and vote in November. The only other thing I see in the future would be that we have to find some way to put this state into receivership. And we need to get some mature adults running this place instead of the 121 that control the purse strings now. Well, you know, when uh, the state keeps uh, theoretically balancing the budget, but it's a lot of smoke and mirrors and gimmicks, and they kick the can down the road, and the only time they really stop kicking is when Wall Street says, no, we're not going to buy your paper anymore and the windows closed and the credit rating goes down. And here in today's paper, there's a front page article that we now have 1.9 trillion being added to our debt. But the federal government doesn't quite have the same problem because they can print money or borrow it and the state has to theoretically balance their budget. But as we were talking before we went on air, if uh, China stops buying our debt paper, then maybe the federal government will get real. Yeah, and the bond market will tell California that they've had enough too, and then we'll, we'll have you know this come to Jesus uh, opportunity. It's going to be rather interesting. We, we've just gone through two major bubbles. We've gone through this high-tech boom, and we've gone through this real estate boom. We, we were exceeding returns in those two areas well above the mean, and we should have expected things to come back down. And, and, and what we did is we hired at new levels and, and the unions, if I were to kick a dead horse here, don't believe in, in you know, laying off employees. Yeah. And so we, we're, we're still at the top of the bubble. We, we still need to make cuts to get us back to where we started. We're, we're sort of back in 2000. So you know, if you look at some of the charts, and, and we've got to get our government back down to that level. But just to summarize then, among the suggestions are a later retirement age, moving it up from 55 to 60 or 65. Correct. Uh, uh, a lower multiple instead of 2.7, 1.7, 1.6, and uh, also more employee contributions. In, in some situations, employees are contributing very little, if anything. Correct. And then you want to have, uh, um, you said, a, a, a higher age. No, no, you're, you're hitting all the, all the points. You want to have voter approval for new benefits. We've got to put a valve in there. But voters have to get involved and express their view to their supervisors, their Congress people, and their state legislators, because uh, they do, I mean, you do listen to your voters, do you Absolutely. not? Absolutely, and, and they're saying we have pension envy, and so we've got to fix <laughs> that. <laughs> well, we do. I mean, the average working guy in the private sector or gal doesn't enjoy the same benefits as the public employee, and there's something spiritually and metaphysically objectionable for having better I mean, it's like a privileged class of public employees to have all these benefits. 
And I'm a public employee, so what can I say? So yeah, we, we just got to get down to reality again. It, it, we, we, we followed some bubbles. We got to pay attention. We got to get back to where we should be. There was a classic book that we read in college called Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. And it traced bubbles all the way back. And bubbles are based on human nature and greed. The particular, it was the tulip mania in Holland, right. which is particularly right. near and dear to your heart. That's right. And, and then the English trading bubble. But uh, having worked on Wall Street, I know it's just fear and greed and the interplay. And when a bubble gets going, boy, watch out. That's right. And now, now we're, we're in the hangover mode here. Yes. We're the cleanup party. Well, we'll be back with the remaining portions of our show after these messages. <laughs> Welcome to McKenna's on the Bay, where fine dining is complemented with a breathtaking view. McKenna's is a restaurant of incredible ambiance, providing service and cuisine with style, class, and romance. The menu offers a variety of appetizers, serious seafood, prime steaks, an oyster bar, and specialty entrees for either lunch or dinner. McKenna's on the Bay features patio dining, nightly entertainment, and two banquet facilities. No matter what your occasion, McKenna's on the Bay is like being on vacation. Join us today at McKenna's on the Bay. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee, freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember, Polly's. 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. who are closest to you, from our family to yours. McCarty's Jewelry, since 1932. How do you like your chances the rest of the way? I got no idea. But I do know that if we stay with Naples Rib Company, at least we won't go hungry. Coach, what do you think about some of those questionable calls tonight? Oh, yeah, but if you want a sound call, I'd call Naples Rib Company. You can't miss on that call. Then Naples Rib Company is part of your game plan? There really is nothing more motivating than a great barbecue meal at Naples Rib Company. Victory or not, Naples Rib Company, great game plan. I think that John Warlock has something very important to say about pension reform and where we are as an economy and a country without it. And just as he was quite accurate in predicting the fall of Orange County with its pension uh, investments, I think we need to listen to what he's saying or bear the consequences. I'm very proud to have John here as our guest for the first taping here at California State University, Long Beach, and proud to say that he's an uh, alum of our College of Business. And John, you got a pretty decent education at our College of Business. I'm very thankful. Well, thank you uh, for, for joining us. And we have 30 seconds left. Say whatever you want to our viewers. I just want to say, Art, that my wife just loves you to pieces. And you do such a great job as a host. So oh God. Uh, you are uh, well worth uh, spending time with and watching. So I, I'm proud of your viewers. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us. And please be with us next week for the next edition of Straight Talk. Good night, everyone. Straight Talk has been brought to you by Southern California Edison, The Press-Telegram, and Long Beach Magazine. And remember, Straight Talk is viewable worldwide 24-7 at straighttalktv.com.